Good morning. Good morning. I love hearing good morning back. <laughs> Welcome to St. Andrews, an inclusive and affirming church located in downtown North Bay. I am Caitlin Smithers, and I'm told I'm no longer the new minister here. <laughs> it's official, you're stuck with me. And for any of you who missed it, we had a wonderful service celebrating that at the Covenanting last Sunday. If you want to watch, it's available online. Whoever you are, whatever your background or heritage or circumstance, your gender identity or expression, your sexual orientation or family unit, whoever you love, whether you are here in person or joining us later online, you are welcome here. And we hope that our time together can be a blessing to you as you are a blessing to us. It is as a community that we affirm and welcome one another, that we build community and care for one another. So this morning, I wanted to invite you to share something with the people around you. So a couple of weeks ago, we all said hi to one another and made new friends. So this week, I'm inviting you to share something that brings you hope, since today is kind of a hope theme. So maybe you want to share that with someone nearby, or maybe you want to get to know somebody new and share something that brings you hope. But I invite you to take a couple of minutes and do that. Okay, have we learned something new about the people around us? The things that bring us hope? All right, keep those in mind. I might ask later. I swear it's not a test, though. Nobody will be graded. All right, and now for our announcements. I want to thank Janet and Derek and Kim for putting together our announcements and the PowerPoint. They're beautiful week after week, and I know that we say that often but I really, really mean it. We couldn't do this without them. And now I think we have an exciting announcement that comes with a big surprise. <laughs> yes, that's you. <laughs> took on this initiative with the Orchard gift cards. Uh, sh she sold enough to have a donation to Loaves and Fishes of $460, which is 23 clients served groceries. And we thank the partnership with Orchards and Glenn Gravel of Orchards. So thank you. Thank you. us to continue with this fundraiser. So if anyone has uh, has not purchased any um, gift certificates or would like to buy more, I, I mean, check your Christmas list. They're wonderful gifts to give to, you know, your snow shoveler or whatever. And um, it puts money in our food bank and it helps everyone all the way around. Thank you. Thanks, 
So for those of you who didn't hear um, through the microphone, either online or here, we raised $460 through the gift cards from Orchards. So thank you so much to everybody who bought a gift card. And now Kim has an announcement about what we look forward to next week. Good morning. Um, next Sunday for the second Sunday in Advent is peace and we're continuing our theme as we move through Advent to wonder how a worry, weary world practices peace and let us find peace through the act of connection. This is also White Gift Sunday and we look to connect with each other here at St. Andrews and outside our walls to the greater community. So, for the, so let us care for our neighbors, especially those who find themselves homeless, hungry, and being alone during this time. So we're supporting this Sunday those that use the warming center. So Dennis Chippa will be coming to talk about the warming center and what it does and the services it provides. And there should be a, a, um, a little handout in each of your um, bulletins that talk about items that they might would benefit from. And if you want to make a cash donation, please make sure your name and stuff is in there so they can send you a receipt as well as uh, who to make the checks payable to. So, thank you. Okay, more exciting things coming up. This coming Saturday is the Kids Only Bazaar. One of, I've been told, this community's favorite events of the season where kids get to go around and shop, and the parents get to enjoy treats and warm drinks, and surprises of whatever the kids choose. <laughs> They're all wrapped by volunteers, and they have all been donated by people in this community and beyond. So if you have any donations, this is the last call for them. If you would like to volunteer to help set up or help some kids shop, this is the last call for that. And we hope that you'll, we'll see you there, and that you'll let Anyone, any of the young people in your lives know to go. Next, we have a hopefully fun, meaningful, and fantastic pageant coming up next um, on December 10th. So we are going to be practicing after church next Sunday. So we invite anyone who would like to be an actor, anyone of all ages. It'll be an intergenerational uh, pageant. So we invite you to come and practice with us or ask questions or read through together. So that'll be after church next Sunday. And then the following week, we'll probably practice on the Saturday morning. And then you'll get to see the pageant. So we hope that you'll come and have some fun and some warm treats and, and act out together. Now we also have another special service coming up in Advent, which we call the Carols and Lessons Service which Ralph is helping lead with the choir. And it will be on December 17th, both in the morning and in the evening. So we hope to see many of you there. And finally, on Christmas Eve, we, you may have noticed Christmas Eve this year is on a Sunday. So we will be having a service on the, in the evening on Christmas Eve. We will not be having a morning service. There are other United Churches in the area who will be doing morning services and afternoon services. So we hope there'll be lots of opportunity for whatever time you'd like to attend a service. But we know how much folks enjoy the evening service here, lighting the candles and getting to see them glow in the, in the dimness. So we hope to see you at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. And finally, again, I guess, you may have noticed that there's a stable here in the sanctuary so it's, um, it's completing our sanctuary full of decorations that we have all around us. And I wanted to take a minute to thank Ruth and Raymond for decorating this beautiful sanctuary for us. All of the lights and boughs and decorations on our tree perfectly hung are all thanks to them. So we're so grateful for that. And the stable is something I'm hoping maybe we can decorate together, all of us as a community. So throughout Advent, we're inviting folks in the community to bring things up to our stable, to add things that might be familiar to you over the holidays, traditions or symbols or items that mean something to you. 
So we'll have a part later in the service where we invite you to do that. And if you don't have something with you here this morning, we do have some craft supplies at the back of the church and also in this little corner over here in our chapel, which we're calling an all ages craft space. So we invite anybody of all ages to enjoy that time through Advent, decorating and making decorations or doing whatever craft you would like to in that space. So. And then I believe Liz has a couple of announcements for us. I just want to add to Caitlin's announcement about the decorations. So when uh, Caitlin referred to Ray and Ruth, she was talking about Lois Carey's daughter, Ruth, and her grandson, Raymond. And they spent Thursday afternoon here uh, decorating, and we had a, a wonderful opportunity to chat about how Lois is doing. She is in hospital. Her um, ward has COVID, so limited visiting. But um, on Wednesday evening, she actually fed herself a yogurt. So, and Ruth said that was the most she'd eaten in a week. So things are things are looking up. So all of this is all of this is for our beloved Lois. Um, calendars. So I saw the Ingersons come in with a cardboard box, which means the real live calendars are here. And so uh, they are available for $20, beautiful, beautiful artwork. Um, so see Bill and Judith for those. Uh, Turkey Fest soup still available on the table behind Manick. Um, cookies, cookies, if you want Christmas cookies, Baking Spirits Bright is back. Um, a tin of five dozen fancies for $45. Uh, just give me a call. My phone number is in the together sheet. Um, that would be terrific. And we plan to have them ready for pickup December the 10th, the day of the pageant. And Christmas poinsettias. Joan Worcester has made me aware that she actually has forms ready. The announcement about the poinsettias for Christmas uh, we'll go in next week's together, but she is prepared for those of you who want to get right on it and order your memorial uh, poinsettias. So uh, please see Joan after worship. Thanks. So exciting, celebrating so many things this season with all of you and sharing often familiar stories and traditions that remind us that thanks to God and one another, we are not alone. I know this season can also be difficult though, so I wanted to invite anyone who's having a hard time to reach out to me or to those around you and point you to the fact that we're gonna be doing a longest night service again this year with Trinity, where we take some time to remember the challenges and to pause and lean on each other and on God in those moments. So please feel free to come out and enjoy that too. What's the date of that? Oh, it'll be on December 21st at 7 p.m. Thanks. Thanks for asking, Meg. And now, as we acknowledge this territory we are so privileged to worship on that has been the home of the Anishinaabe peoples of the Nipsing First Nation, this territory covered by the Robinson Huron Treaty of 1850, I'm reminded of the deep gifts that the land gives each of us. And I wonder what we can give back to the land as people who share this land and who walk this land together. In a community where I hear over and over again how much this land and, this, and the peoples here mean to you, I want to acknowledge and honor that as we strive to work towards reconciliation and right relationship. Now you may notice that we don't have a Christ candle, or that we do, but it's in our Advent, calendar, our Advent wreath here this morning. So we will be lighting a community candle, as we so often do, and then later on Christmas Eve, we will light the Christ candle. So in the meantime, we will light one of these each week. So, as we light this community rainbow candle this morning, let us remember we each carry a light that goes with us wherever we go, a light that can give us hope, 
that sometimes surpasses understanding and reminds us we are never alone. And now I invite you to join me in our Advent candle lighting liturgy. Oh. <laughs> After <them. laughs> And that's just a sneak peek of the music we'll enjoy in a minute. <laughs> How does a weary world hope? by praying for children as they grow and picking up trash on the sidewalk, by insisting that small acts can make a difference. There are a million ways to practice hope, so today we light the candle of hope as a reminder and as a charge. With God's help, we need And now I invite you to join me in our call to worship. In God's house, we can be hope, we can be joyful. We can be grateful, we can be hopeful. In God's house, we can be weary. We can be anxious, we can be grieving. In God's house, we can be honest. Inspired or tired, delighted or doubtful, connected or curious, and everything this is God's house. We are welcome exactly as we are. Let us worship our loving God. And you may notice at this point in your bulletins, we're actually going to sing a slightly different song. So we're going to sing Voices United, God of All Places. It will be up on the PowerPoint so you can follow along.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we are weary. For weary bodies that ache and cry, we pray. Forgive us when we push ourselves too hard. Remind us that we deserve Sabbath rest. For weary minds that feel overwhelmed and saturated with news, we pray. Forgive us when we create too many distractions. Remind us that in the quiet we can hear you. For weary hearts that long to feel the joy of this season, we pray. Forgive us when we are too impatient with ourselves. Remind us that healing takes time and that joy and grief can coexist. For the weary edges of our faith that struggle to hold on to hope, forgive us. Remind us of Zachariah and Elizabeth. Remind us that your good news knows no bounds as we continue our prayer in song. We believe in a God who hears our prayers, who knows the shape and form of our weariness. We believe in a God who wants joy and delight for us, not just survival and existence. We believe in a God who looks ahead, who is not done dreaming for the world, a God who sends hope in the form of people and change, movements and spirit. And so we return to this space, we bring our joy and our weariness like two sides of the same coin, and we trust that God is already at work. Yes, we believe in a God that hears our prayers. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Amen. And now we've come to that point later on our service where we invite you to bring something up to our community stable. And while we do, we invite uh, we're going to be singing a fun and creative song written by our own Ralph Johnston. So uh, if you have fun things that you want to add to our stable traditions and things that you want to bring forward, we invite you to do that now. And if you don't have anything with you this morning, I'm told we also have a tradition of bringing some of the characters in our nativity forward who you might find in the windows. So maybe we could take a look at the windows and maybe there are a few folks who would like to help bring up some of those characters. I think they come forward one window each week, so I'm told. Maybe there are a few of you who'd like to do that while we sing our song.
Good morning. morning. Today's scripture reading is Luke 1, verses 1 to 23. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided, after investigating everything carefully, from the very first to write an orderly account for you, the most excellent philosophers, so that you may now know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now, at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink, even before his birth. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people to, of Israel to their Lord God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did not come out, when he did come out, he could not speak to them and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept monitoring to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went home. These words are often as wisdom for our journey. Let us walk together in their truth. Now I invite you to join us in singing.
Merkin Medical Care Pantry. Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts find their source in you, the source of all being, for you are the wellspring of life and love for all of creation. Amen. So, as you've probably already guessed, our theme for this morning is about hope. So, I'm wondering, what brings you hope? Or maybe you'd like to share what brings your neighbor or your friend that you met this morning hope? A green turtle was found, uh, those of us who are global mail addicts, a green turtle was found off the waters of Nova Scotia. And if they normally live in, uh, the, Mediter in uh, the Caribbean, and the turtles have no way of regulating their heat. So unless they can exercise, they can't stay alive but in the cold weather, its muscle was freezing out. Its muscles were freezing. Uh, and so uh, it was found and delivered to a teacher of veterinary medicine, and he took it home and put it in his bathtub. <laughs> Fortunately, his spouse was also a veterinary medicine. <laughs> <laughs> she understood. Uh, and they brought I'll share it a sec. Life. And it's doing well. And it's going to be going on an airplane flight probably pretty soon. Wow. So a green turtle was found off the coast of Nova Scotia. And someone found it and brought it home because it was too cold in the water there for it to survive. So they put it in their bathtub. Thank goodness they were veterinarians, and so they knew why it was there. Now it is apparently on a plane going back. Where? To the Caribbean somewhere. To the Caribbean, where it can be in warmer waters. <laughs> yes. Some of us might like to be that turtle. <laughs> Caitlin, you bring us hope. You bring us hope. Aw, thank you. Having friends gather together. Having friends gather together. Yes, Pat. Yes, G. The temporary truce in the Middle East, we're hoping it will bring lasting peace, mm -hmm. for sure. Thank you, Judy. Yes, Gareth. I thought I was planning that you're going to be a great grandfather. You're going to be a great grandfather. Oh, that's so special. He already is a great grandfather. Ah, well put, Jim. Anyone else have reasons that bring, things that bring them hope? Well, someone shared with me it was the congregation of St. Anthony. Kim says, someone shared with her it was the congregation of St. Andrews that brings them hope. Spoiler alert, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Frankie? Hmm. Frankie shares a story of a quilt that she got from a group that used to be many, many women and is now five older ladies that still go on and going strong. And she hopes that they'll just keep going and they can inspire all of us. For sure. Is there another one? Yes, Larry. Hmm. Yeah. What brings Lori hope is the, the people in this congregation, the volunteers, the donations, all the ways that we support the food bank each day. So thank you all for that. Pat shares and bringing back the kids only bazaar so we can see a, 
see some kids filling this space and bringing the joy and energy that they bring. Yes, we're so grateful for that. All right. Well, in our story this morning, we hear about Zachariah and Elizabeth and how they came to be parents of a little child named John, who some of you may know goes on to be John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, who baptizes many people and is said to prepare the way for Jesus. But the story we hear this morning is not just his story. It is also the story of his parents and how much their lives are about to change. His parents, Elizabeth and Zachariah, seem to be just going about their lives. We hear a little bit about what's going on in that time, and then we hear about Zachariah going off to work. Until, you know, just like any ordinary day, until he goes into the temple, expecting to offer incense, and all of a sudden comes face to face with an angel, according to the story. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but it seems like every story in the Bible where an angel appears, everybody's told not to be afraid. So I guess they must frighten people a lot. (laughs) Yes, Jalen? So, we've learned a little bit more about an angel this morning. (laughs) Jalen shared with us that biblical angels are apparently quite scary, for sure. They don't look like we would expect the cute little angels we often see dressed up at Christmas time. (laughs) No. Jalen shares that's that's what she loves about them. I love that. Well, Zachariah was quite scared and for good reason, we've learned. And if he wasn't startled by the sight of the angel, then what the angel had to say next certainly startled him. Probably he was surprised, so surprised that he was at a loss for words. Have you ever had a time when you were so surprised, so startled, you were struck speechless? Maybe you were unable to believe it was even really happening. I wonder if that's how Zachariah felt when he came out of the sanctuary, motioning with his hands, unable to really figure out what to say. No words could capture what had just happened to him, how much his life had just changed in an instant, and how much more it was about to change as each new moment passed. I wonder, can any of you think of a moment when your life changed in an unexpected way? Maybe one you'd like to share? Yes, Jalen. When I was sick, I learned that my bowel gas was shallow. Yes, that would be surprising. How did you respond? I was sick. I didn't really understand what was happening. I mean, I just learned too much. And the uncle told me too much to exhale. But then I learned from him on the phone. I see one. Yeah, it's hard when you're a kid and you find out things that surprise you. Hmm. Does anyone else have something they'd like to share that happened unexpectedly? When Maybe. I found out that I was pregnant with Bethany. Hmm. Liz shares when she found out that she was pregnant with Bethany. Yes. We'd been told there would be no babies, so that was pretty special. They had been told there would be no babies, and yet, here's Bethany here today. (laughs) When I think about my answer to this question, I think about my grandmother and the impact she's had on my life, and also one of the days that changed her life and how she responded. My grandmother was diagnosed with dementia nearly 10 years ago, and in so many ways, we've watched so many parts of her fade away since then. And some days, that's been really, really hard on all of us, especially her. And on the days when she asks the same question 
what seems like the hundredth time, or calls me in tears because she has no idea where she is, or she feels like the people around her aren't letting her do the things that she loves. It's really hard to have hope. During the pandemic, when for months we couldn't go in to see her, we had to just hold up signs and hope that she understood just how much we loved her. It was hard to have hope. When she broke her hip a couple of years ago and was in the hospital for months, struggling to do day-to-day -day things like feed herself or move around without pain, it was really hard to have hope. Yet time and time again, I am reminded of what she said when she first found out she had dementia. If I'm going to forget stuff, I'm going to forget the bad stuff, she said. Now, she may not have total control and choice over exactly what it is she forgets, but she made a choice that day that I think she remains true to, to this day. She will remain kind. She will remain hopeful. She will cling to her faith. She will choose to look with everything she has in her for the reasons to be grateful, to smile, to laugh, to keep going each day. And she does. She hopes and smiles and laughs and loves deeper than I wonder if she ever has before. Because she has hope. And she brings so many of us hope too. It is a kind of hope and a way of seeing the world that is my greatest gift and lesson from her. That and the gift of the question, and what are you going to do about it? A question she asks me every time I call her, complaining about whatever it is that's going on. She always asks, and what are you going to do about it? <laughs> she understands still, as she continues to write letters to politicians and leaders, to people in the nursing home that she lives in, to people in articles that she reads in the paper, that hope is an action. And we all do our part in spreading that hope when we ask ourselves, what are we going to do about it? And we find ways, sometimes in unexpected and seemingly insignificant ways, of keeping hope alive, of hoping against all odds, of believing sometimes in the hard to imagine possibilities. Like we can see if we look a little closer at our story this morning. As a couple who have their whole lives lived out their faith in the ways they've been taught. Elizabeth and Zachariah continue to hope, not necessarily for children in the traditional sense, but for God to be at work in their lives. As the author of the book of Luke reminds us time and time again, Elizabeth is not the first to give birth later in life, but instead becomes one of a line of women whose specific birth stories lead us to a pattern of the old ushering in the new. As the message the angel brings shares not only that Elizabeth will have a child, but that the child's name will be John, and he will minister in the spirit of Elijah and show the way to live in faith, in hope, in peace, and in love, a way he teaches about as he baptizes people and gives them hope, hope in spite of everything, Hope in something he has not yet seen, and yet hope that is possible. As we see him living out what it means to ask yourself, what can I do about it? As he shares his hope and vision for this new way with anyone and everyone who will listen, while he brings them into the water, one of the greatest symbols and bringers of life. Amen. And now I invite us to enjoy the music by the choir coming home.
Through this Advent season, Caitlin and the worship team are using a resource called Sanctified Art. Among the offerings in this source document are prints of artworks related to the scriptures. Today's piece is entitled Annunciation to Zechariah and is inspired by today's scripture reading that Barb so expressively offered to us earlier. The artist says this about the piece. Zachariah is dressed in a breastpiece, ephod, rope, checkered tunic, turban, and sash, just as the book of Exodus specifies. In my painting, gold, blue, purple, and crimson yarns are worn together and bejeweled with engraved stones which bear the names of the sons of Israel. Zechariah stands in the holy place, wearing the most meticulous of garments. Does he expect to encounter the divine? Or is he just going through the motions, lighting the incense as an all too familiar scent fills the air? After all these years of fulfilling priestly duties and, quote, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord, unquote, Zechariah and his wife are still childless. Regardless of their desire for children, in their culture and context, childlessness bore the implication of God's contempt. Reverend Lauren Wright Pittman, who offers reflections throughout the Sanctified Art um, resource, says this. I ruminated on this image. A weary priest wrapped in layered fabrics, colors, symbols, textures, and rare stones that proclaim God's providence and power. The contrast is not lost. I often try to neglect my weariness by putting on a veneer of unwavering trust in God while feeling like I may suddenly unravel into a pile of beautifully curated threads, stones, and gold accessories. In this image, I decided to depict the angel as smoke from the altar of incense. Zechariah has one hand over his mouth in fear and disbelief while his other hand cradles the notion, not yet hope, of his son's existence. Do you bind up your weariness in a neat and tidy bowl? Put your head down and project okayness, like me? What would it look like to acknowledge our weariness? Quit powering through and open ourselves up to what God might have in store for us. Perhaps we'll meet an angel. So much, so much to hold in hope as we look to hope of our own lives, look for hope in our collective lives this morning, and as we take up our morning offering.
<laughs> All right. Show me do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I think we really got it that time. <laughs> Let us pray. Loving God, the source of our joy and our hope, as we turn our hearts towards sharing and living our faith in you, we ask that you would soften us, soften the calluses on our hearts, weave yourself in between the cracks in our spirits, and plant hope where there is room. And as you do this, like flowers toward the sun, we will turn ourselves towards you, eager to hear you in our lives. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to sing with us, voices. No, no, oh, no, 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 okay. Donna Landry has a prayer. Oh, right, we're to pray. <laughs> Let's pray first. <laughs> We're just practicing this morning to make sure everybody is awake. <laughs> so good morning. Will you please, please pray with me? Dear Creator God, on this first Sunday of Advent, the season of anticipation and celebration, it's a perfect time to reflect on every good thing you have given us and fill our hearts with hope. Help us shake off the anxiety, the discouragements, and the distractions that have filled this year. May we pause to remember that we have hope in you. We know that you answer our prayers, although sometimes in the most unexpected ways. Advent season is an invitation to set our minds clear of the stresses of the year, to take our focus off the crazy hustle that can be associated with the Christmas season, which often produces more stress than delight. Advent is the opportune time to refocus our thoughts on the gifts God has given us. We are grateful for this beautiful country, Canada, for the snow that gives moisture to the earth and delight to the children who play in it, along with some brave adults. We're grateful for our families, friends, our church family that gives us a sense of belonging and love. Thank you, God, for the staff and the volunteers at St. Andrews who use their gifts to provide meaningful worship services, outstanding music, do all kinds of administration work, and the food bank volunteers who feed both the body and the souls of their clients, and those who keep our building clean and repaired. All these folks offer these gifts in hope. As Advent progresses, fill us to overflowing with gratitude and joy, and let us be mindful of those who are shut in hospitalized, and are in need of knowing that they are loved and thought about. We pray today for all those who are in need of hope. Please name them aloud. Lois. Tim and Karen. Carol Bullock. David Christie. Dear, dear God, hear our collective prayers. 
Involve us in these prayers. We are your servants. Amen. Can we sing hymn number two, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, in Voices United. before I share our sending forth, I invite you to come and enjoy some treats and warm beverages after, and maybe continue to share what brings you hope. Family of faith, as you leave this place, and you go into a weary world, so speak tenderly. Do the good that is yours to do. Choose connection. Hold on to hope. And remember, you are God's beloved. So go rejoicing. The world needs it. Amen. Amen.